Hey up guys! So, you would probably think that me being a massive movie lover, that I would pick a partner who loves the same things that I do. Well, my partner Glenn, who I've been dating for six years, is actually one of the most inexperienced cinema goers there is. It's really weird. Maybe it's an opposite to track situation, but he hasn't seen some of the most basic, fundamental, classic films that pretty much everyone has seen. The man hasn't seen Jaws, Ghostbusters, Return of the Jedi, American Beauty, or E.T. Who goes through childhood without seeing E.T.? Next time I see his parents, we're gonna have a talk. So I thought to myself, I'm gonna educate him. I'm gonna sit him down and force him to watch some classic cinema. And it gives me an excuse to review some old beloved movies on my channel. So I took a poll on Twitter and I asked you guys which classic essential piece of mandatory cinema should I make him watch first? And you guys picked Robert Zemeckis' Back to the Future. So that's what I'm talking about today. What classic film should I force Glenn to watch next? Whatever you guys think, pop it in the comment section down below. If you like the video, hit like. If you want more content like this, don't forget to click subscribe and you can follow me on social media, Twitter and Instagram, it's all in the video description down below. Back to the Future was both set and released in 1985. It was directed by Robert Zemeckis. It was also written by Zemeckis and Bob Gale and stars Michael J. Fox as a 17-year-old Marty McFly, a scrappy, likeable teenager who loves a bit of rock and roll. He's good friends with the local scientist, Doc Brown, played by Christopher Lloyd. One night, Doc requires Marty's assistance with his latest invention, a DeLorean car, which he has pimped out into a time machine. But when the experiment is interrupted by Libyan terrorists, Marty escapes in the DeLorean car and finds himself 30 years in the past in 1955, back when his own parents were teenagers. With the help of the younger Doc Brown, Marty tries to set his parents on the path so that they fall in love and then Marty himself will be born later in the future and also Doc tries to figure out a way to get Marty back to the future. Well technically it would be back to the present but back to the future just sounds cooler. Back to the future never stops being awesome. I've seen this film like a dozen times but watching it through Glenn's eyes for the first time yesterday evening was a real treat. Seeing Glenn crack up at moments like Biff getting covered in manure or Marty going over the top while singing Johnny Be Good just illustrates how well this movie has aged. It's full of its fair share of cheesy or goofy moments, but I would never call Back to the Future hokey. The tone of the film is consistently free-spirited and eccentric, and it never stops being fun. You know a film has longevity when you watch it with someone who's never seen it before, but recognizes so many parts from it. Back to the Future has so much instantly recognizable iconography. The DeLorean, Marty's life preserver jacket, the fiery tire tracks. Glenn knew about all of this stuff without ever having seen the film, and that's because it's embedded in the zeitgeist. Even the soundtrack is iconic, the Power of Love, Johnny B. Good, and Earth Angel, they've all become synonymous with this film. But Alan Silvestri's score is timeless. It's full of adventure and energy. The script by Zemeckis and Gale is so tight. There's not a single line which is wasted. There's no padding or filler. Every line serves a purpose, and it's so snappy with its pace. The performances are incredible. Michael J. Fox was already famous at the time for the Family Ties TV series, but the role of Marty McFly made him a household name and a heartthrob. He's just so damn likable as Marty McFly. He's cool without being cocky or arrogant. I mean, he skateboards, he's in a band. He's barely five foot tall, but he stands up to humongous bullies. And he's also brilliantly awkward when his younger version of his mom starts hitting on him. Definitely a little bit of an Oedipus complex in this film, or maybe reverse Oedipus, if it's she who fancies her son. It's weird. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown is magnificent. The energy that he brings to the role matches the zany tone of the film. This is definitely his most iconic role. Leah Thompson, Crispin Glover, and Thomas F. Wilson all play their younger and older versions of their characters. Crispin Glover, in particular, is wonderful as the gangly, nerdy George McFly. He's actually the one with the most satisfying character growth in the film. There's also so many little gem moments sprinkled throughout Back to the Future, which make it such delicious viewing. Like this shot in the diner where Marty's eyes peek over Biff's hulking shoulders. The opening tracking shot with the domino effect of practical mechanical gizmos. Robert Zemeckis was doing the long opening tracking shot before it became fashionable. Lorraine calling Marty Calvin Klein because of his underwear brand. And even the little attention to detail easter eggs like the mall being called the Twin Pines Mall 
at the beginning of the film, and then when Marty goes back in time and lands in the spot where the mall used to be and knocks over one of the Twin Pines, when it comes back to 1985, it's now called the Lone Pine Mall. It's little details like that which show how much thought, passion, and love went into making this film. There's real emphasis on practical effects in this film. There is CGI, but it's used quite sparingly, and because of that, this film holds up so well today. As for negatives, I don't really have any. I mean, the Libyan terrorists are a little stereotyped, and the scene with Biff and Lorraine in the car is a little bit questionable, but they don't ever cross the line into too far territory. This was made in the 80s and predominantly set in the 50s. It sounds like an excuse, but it's not, but you could get away with more stuff back then. You only have to look at the salty language in this film to see what I mean. There's so much casual swearing in this film. You definitely couldn't get away with this much swearing in a family film by today's standards. I'm gonna get that son of a bitch. In the end guys, Back to the Future is such a breezy joyride. There is not a single dull moment in it. It's one of those rare films which transcends age groups as well as generations. Like this film is just as beloved today as it was upon release. And I can see this film still being loved in 100, 200, 300 years time. It feels rather fitting to say that Back to the Future, a film all about time travel, has stood the test of time. If only I had a time machine to see if it was truly loved in the year 3000. So I'm asked those three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Of course, I was saying to Glenn, I'm gonna make our kids watch it. They're gonna love it. Our kids are gonna love it. So yeah, gonna rewatch it many, many times. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? Definitely. I would say Back to the Future is a movie that everyone needs to see before they die. It's mandatory viewing. And question number three, what score to give it out of 10? It kind of comes with the whole movie you gotta see before you die status. So Back to the Future gets a score of 10 out of 10. But as always guys, this is just one bloke's opinion. I want to hear from you what you guys think of Back to the Future. Whatever your thoughts and opinions about this movie, be sure to pop them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to put your requests for other classic movies for me to force Glenn to watch and then me to review later in that comment section down below. If you did like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want more movie and TV content just like this, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.